Okay, so I got this a while back. It's a Smithy CB1220 XL in the metric and it works pretty good. You know, I can't complain. It's kind of sloppy. It's you got to be delicate with it. You know, it's little, it's light duty, but it's been working pretty good. But at the end of the day, I was, was getting frustrated with the lathe because you just don't have very much bed here. And I want to build drive shafts. I want to build stuff to just drive shafts around the farm, whether it's something to go underneath of the rock crawling type stuff and the snow wheeling stuff and or, um, you know, drive shaft for augers and pumps and whatever on the farm. So what it boiled down to is I built something else. So I started to build a follower for that little smithy and decided, you know what, I got some stuff laying around. I'm just going to build a bigger lathe. Now it's very homemade. It's made out of scrap iron. I didn't buy a single piece of iron to build this thing. Uh, everything was stuff I had laying around. But anyway, so I built this follower. Follower is adjustable with all, this all thread right here and then these, these bearings swivel right here so that they can actually track on stuff and you can adjust it to however big diameter you're talking it slides back and forth on these ways and then it locks in one on each side here and here so you can set it wherever you want and lock it down i built this table here this chunk of iron is actually attached to these pieces of angle iron down here and then there's four locks or just bolts with nuts that i welded on there's one two three and four uh, all the way around that so you can slide that thing back and forth and put it wherever you actually want it to be and then lock it down then you can loosen these nuts here one on each side slide this back and forth and get in the neighborhood where you want to be and turn around and lock that down so then you've got adjustment all over the place then we'll do all of our small movements with this here and this table I had laying around I didn't it was just in the shop here so I didn't have to buy it I'm gonna get a different tool holder for it probably a quick change something else but anyway uh, got that set up should work pretty good I've got this chuck here it was laying around also didn't purchase it for this project already had it it's a four-way not non self-centering chuck so I can move all four teeth independently and put whatever I want in here whether it's a round or a yoke or whatever I want um, I used a trailer wheel with a hub and just trailer bearings in here but not too surprised the wheel flexes a lot so then I put a carrier bearing back here and just put a frame down on each side to hold that assembly and that added a ton of rigidity to this chuck itself so it's not moving so much then over here I brought out on on that on that uh, spindle or whatnot that's here I actually chucked it up in the lathe, welded on this half inch plate, turned it down on the outside, and then turned a boss right here. So this fits the chuck really nice. Then on this side, I welded on a chunk and turned it down to half inch to accept a pulley. And then I motor mounted a motor down here. Now this motor is just a two horse, uh, three phase motor, and it seems to work really well. I've got adjustable sheave right here so I can change the diameter of this pulley and speed it up and slow it down. It looks like I can go anywhere from about 1850 on the motor to a three to one reduction around 600 on the chuck, or I can go closer to 1850 on the motor and about 1,000, 1100 on the chuck. So that's kind of the variations I got there. Bought this VFD off of Amazon. It's just an XSY AT1 but it's rated for three horses the point so it's 100 150 percent of capability of the two horse motor down here i used regular flexible conduit to come from the motor come up wired it in underneath of here so nothing can get to these wires and mess them up then i used a cord grip right here and came up through right here so that's tucked way back in there and they're pretty well protected and then you can yank on this cord and it actually doesn't yank on any wires Built this shield around here. I got an extra belt. I just tucked it in here. Um, I built a big shield for the motor so no debris can get to it. It is open on this end so it, got, it can get plenty of air passing through here but on the same note it's tucked way back in there so 
won't get any sort of debris that way. It's just two bolts and that whole cover will slide out of there. It's pretty simple. Um, I found that my ways were not exactly precise as to where I needed to be as far as their distance apart. So this table was jamming up a little bit. So I actually just tacked a bolt right here, used a long threaded nut or coupler, whatever they call it, and then spun that out. And there's not a lot of tension, but it's just a tiny bit gives me the perfect fit to this table. So, well, seems to work pretty good. Um, I haven't actually tried it, loaded it, or, you know, cut anything with it yet. It's all just kind of brand new. I just literally spun it up here for the first time about a half hour ago. Um, I did play with a lot of settings in here. You can ask about that later if you like. Um, between torque compensation and all of your hertz settings and frequency stuff. So anyway, there's a little bit of noise because I didn't... I cleaned and repacked these bearings so they're nice and fresh that way, but I didn't replace them. And they were slightly, just slightly pitted. They're not quite perfect. And then of course to get zero slack, I actually, as opposed to when you set it up with a trailer and you don't over tighten the bearings here, I just barely preloaded them as light as I could so that there's no slack in that hub. So that helped tighten things up that way. But anyway, so that makes a little bit of noise. Now that being said, with the settings that I've got right now, I can run this up to about five hertz. And there we go, you know, it starts spinning round and round it goes. So it's got a reasonable amount of torque, not a lot, I can stall it if I work on it. But there's quite a bit of torque there. And then of course, I can run this up. And there at 65 hertz, it works pretty good. It's been in, you know, about 600 RPM the way I've got that belt set down there, so. Anyway, it's pretty slick. Um, I'm happy with it. I welded on a little piece of tubing and put the chuck right here, so that's handy. Um, should work good. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, whatever, and we'll see what happens.